I'm the guy a year ago who would pull into the garage and hit the button for the garage door to come down behind me so that I wouldn't have to engage in the neighbors after the long day of work. I was that guy. Um, and I was okay with that. I wasn't even really aware that I was doing that. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't on my radar. Um, Pastor Dan poses the question, if God intentionally put you in your neighborhood as a missionary, how are you fulfilling that calling? We started inviting people with the expectation that nobody would come. And you know, we invited one group and they didn't. And you know, we were light and we were like, okay, because we didn't want to invite a thousand people and all of a sudden have a thousand people show up. So we're trying to be strategic with what we can handle with the kids and the couples. Uh, but we're walking down the street hand in hand praying as we invite the next neighbor. And she said yes. And wow. Now we've had neighbors inviting other neighbors. Hey, they've got this group on Sunday night. You should join us. And they have. When we finish up a study, we always do a fellowship night. And the last few, we've done cookouts. And we've gone to all the neighbors and just invited them all. And they've come. They might not come to the Bible study yet, but they're they're willing to take part in the community part and getting together and the cookout. And we really, I mean, our group will provide the food and then we just say, come, you don't need to bring anything to show up. And people have really seem to enjoy that. We put up sprinklers for the kids and put up the tents outside and they come. One of the weeks we were talking in, um, in Mark and they ran to the tomb and the boulder was moved. Uh, and one of the points in the lesson was God does the heavy lifting. And that type of reality to understand that it's got nothing to do with us other than just some obedience and extending an invitation. But he's working in the hearts and minds. He's working to change lives. He's softening hearts to the invitation. When we're called to love our neighbors, we're called to love all people. I mean, we're considered our neighborhood is our neighbors, but everyone out there is really, I mean, when you think of it biblically, they're all our neighbors. We've chosen to, you know, plant ourselves in our community and really reach out to them. But when the, when Jesus commands us, love God, love others, that's really loving your neighbor and intentional living. So that's how we love our neighbors is just trying to live intentionally, getting to know them, reaching out to them, praying for them, just following up with all the prayer requests that really it really shows Jesus' love for them. There's nothing any of us could do to help him along in that process, obviously. Um, but our expectations were so low. We so underestimated him uh, being the Lord and how he would work um, and bless us through this and, and just be a blessing to help us bless the community. And I'm saying, wow, this is what it looks like to shine your light. There is no awkward, there's only opportunity. There is no coincidence, there's only divine appointment. And it's an intentional perspective that says, we've been entrusted with this truth. It's a spiritual truth, it's a saving experience. We can share that with people. We're only called to be obedient, to be intentional. We can't, we can't do anything about what the receiving end of it is. But we're called to be obedient, to be intentional, to care for our neighbors, to love them, to reach out to them to shine the light. To shine the light.